Whose blindfold smells funny? That's one of my socks. Don't know what you're doing, but you're not getting enough off, are you? Get enough off quick now. Yeah, have a look at the diagram. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry, mate. Are you ready? 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 Just you and me, Pete. No, I was just closing my eyes. You stood me up. You have an aversion to Chinese food? I couldn't get away. If you want me to show you what you want to see, it has to be the right time. Yeah, well, when's it going to be the right time? Now. Hi. Okay. Yeah. Rudy, what are you doing here? They wanted me to clean up, start taking down the rig. This is someone we're trying to impress. This is... Uh, Frank, how are you doing? Rudy is a chemist. He makes our drugs. Frank is a financial friend. Ah, an investor. Boys upstairs, eh? Wanted to see uh, money in motion, take a good look around before we move them out for distribution. Yeah, are all these crates filled? I was just saying how safe it is. Oh, yes. No need to have any worries on that score. Friends in high places, if you know what I mean. That's what I like to hear. It's that kind of security that keeps our customers coming back for more. Aside from the obvious fact that our oxycodone is the best out there. Twice the potency of regular powders. I know what you're doing is hard. You gotta be strong. I'm turning in my boyfriend. And I need you to do more. I'll be here for you. I read somewhere you're not supposed to trade fortunes. It's bad luck. Oh, yeah. But there's an amendment to that rule. You can give your fortune away to someone you believe in. A smart girl would put wisdom like that to use. All we need to do is find you a smart girl then. 
I think I already may be getting hung up on one. I've got to go. They're going to be wondering where I am. Get me out of your let. Are you saying that after seven months of hard work, when I kick those doors in tomorrow, there's not gonna be any OC? Listen, these guys are loaded up and they're ready to sail from a different location, way across town. A location I have just come from. I've seen it. And by the time you realize what's going on, they'll be long gone. You gotta move your operation. Who's your source? It's someone who trusts me. It's someone who needs me. Believe me, that feels pretty good right now. Remember when you gave me these? I thought these were stable to Lexington Avenue. Yeah, they were, but uh, Eddie's Manhattan is no more. You gave those to me the night that you talked me out of blowing off my police exams. That was the first brick in Eddie's Manhattan. And you were the one who believed in me. You were the one who bet on the right horse. Yeah, Benny, it's me. Drop what you're doing, get down to the office, start calling people in. Who's your source? Is this somebody you can trust? I want to know, are you 100% sure, Eddie? Are you sure? Are you sure you can trust them? Drugs, Eddie. Reliable source, Eddie. Why does it smell like mint? Throws off the customs dogs. They really got to you, Eddie. I don't even know what drawer to file this in. Look at this. Take a look at these, Eddie. See those, Eddie? Those are messages. Take a look at that. Look at those messages, Eddie. And those are just the ones without profanity. I'm going to tender my resignation. Why should I accept it, Eddie? Why should I let you off the hook so easy? I'll give you a reason, sir. His credibility is shot. <laughs> I mean... Do you have any idea what a fool this man is? Thanks for clearing that up. I got this, Eddie. The most first-time users can't afford heroin, so they turn to overdosing on oxycodone. Misused, it's twice as addictive and deadly. Eddie has just personally facilitated Europe's street supply for about a year. You're going to London, Eddie. Why? Because you're the only one who's met and can ID this brunette, and more importantly, Eddie, the chemist. Come on, Joni. Sit down, Eddie. Any questions, Eddie? How do you think your wife would like a dog? Chicken or shrimp, sir. Shrimp? Excellent choice. Welcome to London.
Will the owner of the dog on flight 367 from New York please report to quarantine immediately? Are you the owner of this dog, sir? Yes. Quarantine period six months, releases to the date. Six months? Give him this remote. It's his. He likes it. But make sure you wear a glove when you put it in his cage. agreement that was faxed to me is in here. My friend Jonah's wife is friends with the owner of the apartment. Yeah, that's my mother. And we usually do lease out the apartment when I'm in school, but obviously there has been a mistake. The apartment is not for sublet, as thought, because I am not in school, am I? What's wrong with this thing? I have the wrong suitcase. You have the wrong travel agent. I have to call the airport. You have to find a hotel. I have been wearing the same underwear for way too many miles. I am barely running on fumes. Now, please, just find it in your heart not to send me out into the cold night in search of a hotel. I'll sleep on the landing. I don't need any sheets. Just throw me a dish towel, a piece of gauze. I'll make other living arrangements in the morning, and you'll never see me again. He is a policeman. Ugh, all right, I suppose. But you're staying. I will. I've just got to go and feed Mr. Pussums. Mr. Pussums? Yeah, his mother's cat. I hate cats. <laughs> Dear Cat Hater, took the liberty of taking down your personal information while you slept. Everything has and will again be inventoried after you leave. Lock the door on your way out. Some gum. It's 2 30. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Send him in, please. He's ready for you now. How you doing, fellas? Let's get a few things straight, Detective Arlett. I feel our system is less forgiving than what you've come to enjoy in the States. There are certain protocols. Hey, Nathaniel, enough said. I think I can see exactly where this is going, OK? I just got the vibe from Miss Moneypenny out there. You guys got this whole queen thing going on. I get it. But at the end of the day, we're on the same team. I'm just glad to be here. Now, I need a few of your best men, preferably some guys with some heavy urban experience. These drugs probably hit the streets already. Anybody's busted with so much as a grain of this stuff. I want to talk to them. Now, whatever tactical team personnel you guys can have standing by around the clock is going to be a bonus, because when we hit, we're going to hit fast and we're going to hit hard. I'm talking about a full-scale assault. 
Operatives with prior narcotics experience need only apply. You know what I mean. Well, somebody kind of knows the way around a battering ram. And they're like, who's that movie? Guns of Bridge Over the River Kwai, right? Boom. You guys got uh, one of these? Uh... Ah. <laughs> Peace. As per my conversation with District Attorney Rosenthal, we will be assigning Detective Inspector Pippin to assist in this investigation. I should think he'll prove invaluable throughout your short stay. This guy, right here. Cool. So where are we? Well, based on their investigation and your description, a little bit of information come back to me. This chemist, Ruby, lives in this vicinity. Which building? Yeah, not exactly sure. Half on a cockles, please. That's 260, please. Cheers. Mm. Well, that was a good day. That's it. What, do you just come down here, eat a few clams, and that's the end of it? Six o'clock, Eddie. Don't worry, my sources are never wrong. Sooner or later, this Rudy, he'll come out of one of these houses. We'll spot him. It's just a question of patience. Yeah, maybe you're right. I need to find a hotel anyway. Leave that to me, Eddie. Let's go and have a drink. It'll be nice for you to meet Audrey. <laughs> no, no! It's a cocktail sausage! <laughs> All right, mate. All right. This is Gil, okay. Eddie, Gil. This is his lovely wife, Kiki. You know, how are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How have you been? You remember all of you from last week? Mm -hmm. the... <laughs> all right? I know, it's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You'll be checking out Eddie's credentials. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. You know what, Eddie? You have a lot of the same energies as Stephen Crane. I completely agree. Uh, I'm just gonna go get myself uh, another drink. <laughs> hey, Eddie. So what's going on? Police business, very much. All right, mate. What's happening here? Are you, uh, you of the lifestyle, Eddie? The lifestyle swapper? Bit of, bit of crisscross? A swinger? No. No. I mean, I'm not married. Right. I mean, but even if I was, I don't really think I'd be down with that. I think I'm too insecure. I could never let another guy touch my wife, well, let alone in front yeah, of me. No, I could though. neither. No. I think. <laughs> what, what about... Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Well, she's not my wife. You know, we're friends. You guys just pretend you're married so you can come to these swap meets. You can't go unless you're married. No. Mm -hmm. Kill for singles, bars, Eddie. Kills them dead. <laughs> hey, can I just get a uh, regular water? So how do you like me so far?
fault smells funny. And that's what happens. Yeah, but the question is, what are we doing here in this place? Well, this is the only place with a meat separating machine I could find within a 200 mile radius, Rudy. That's all I could find. Fishy, why do we need a meat separating machine? You said square him. I said scare him. I said scare him away, fishy, you idiot. Why would I want to square him? I mean, do I look like Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> now you, you are just making matters much worse for yourself. Don't underestimate your team, Rudy. It's not possible. It couldn't get any worse than this, even if you do stuff me in the cow blender. He doesn't want to go in the meat separating machine. He's just trying to trick us. He's a cop, he is. From New York. Rudy, you might just want to jump in here right after me. If not, I think about getting rid of this guy. He's starting to cramp your style a little bit. Yes, well, unfortunately, he just happens to be my brother. Then you got problems. You know, I'm surprised to see you here. I mean, fair enough. Much bigger cockles than I would have bet on. Why don't you just give me the name of your boss? Then we can start to put this whole thing behind us, huh? <laughs> Go home, Eddie. We don't like your type around here. Good morning, Detective Arlette. And how are you finding the accommodations? Well, none of those goons from the meat plant are here. You're 10, you're 10, aren't you? They're wet. Yeah, they're happy Pritchards, one of our snitches. They've been in the river for a couple of days, but best I could do. I'm sure he's not going to mind? No, he won't mind. He was in them. Yeah. Pity. Dead. Not so happy now, I imagine. <laughs> Never mind, we've got the boots, though. What? Nothing. You're perfectly normal. What's that supposed to mean? You're like this walking shell game. Kind of difficult to get a beat on. Because everything you do contradicts something that you've already done. Now, it's interesting. It's intriguing, but it's just not normal. Hmm, who's Fiona? You're making friends. Oh, yeah, it's just rugby. We play a pretty rough game. I would have invited your friend Nigel, but it's boys only. <laughs> it's very clever. What are you doing here? Yeah, I got this note. Uh, airline delivered bag, get by six or I'll throw it out. This doesn't leave too much to interpretation. Yeah, I said to meet me in the courtyard at lunch and not here at my place of work. Well, you know, the car just smelled so pretty, I had to stop by and see where it came from. Of course, now that I've seen the place, I'm wondering, is it the soap or is it the sales staff? <laughs> Camilla's French, Eddie. She's immune to your insincerities. I'm very sincere. Yeah. So am I when I tell you that you have to go now. Please put that down. Get your stuff out of my flat. Drop the key in the slot. You can try very, very hard to forget we ever met. Please don't touch me. Yeah. Do you know how much a New York City police detective makes in a year? No. Let me tell you, it's not enough. Oh, it's noble to serve and protect, as I recall. It's not my fault that you chose that profession. It's not my fault that they'd have you. That's very droll. Did you learn that in college? Oh, I forgot, you don't go to college. Of course, your mother, she must have forgotten, too. Otherwise, she wouldn't be under a false impression you're off seeding academic fields somewhere, unless you didn't tell her. What do you want? It's a real estate company. They cash my non-refundable deposit check. Now, it may not seem like a lot of money to you, but to me, I'm looking at the wrong end of a very expensive city. Just today, I forked out over 10 grams for breakfast. For me and my partner, all I had was just a cup of tea. Pounds. 
The currency in England is pounds. Whatever. I had a picture of the queen and a 10 on it. I don't have many of those left. What I do have are a lot of these coins. Seem to work the phones pretty good. You know, just in case we should want to call your mom. Straighten this whole thing out. You get my point? Right in the eye. See you at home. Okay, that feels a little better. What? It's all I could find. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. You brought this dog, even though you knew perfectly well when you booked your ticket that he was subject to a six month quarantine. Yeah, well, no one else would take him. It's mandatory. Besides, you don't even know this dog. What? I feed him. A police dog? Oh, yeah. Yep, New York Police Department. Drugs? No, I'm clean. The dog. The dog sniffs drugs? Oh, yes. I mean, he's not addicted. Yeah, right? he's got it. He knows, he knows what he means. Look, I never You're trying to this. sabotage this, this and it will not work because come hell or high water, I'm going to free that dog. <clears throat> Do you remember that big uh, hash bust in France a couple of months back? 37 kilos, yeah? You can thank this little fella. That dog is living with a bounty on his head. You just wouldn't believe how many times it's come close to death. <laughs> I'm looking for some dog food. Just give me the cheapest stuff you got. I don't care if it's expired. Uh, dog food. Uh, you, want, you want dog food? You're in your house coat. Me? Yes. And I'm engaged in an emergency at present. I have come to buy a screwdriver. A screwdriver? Yes, that's correct. Why? Because your dog is using my cat as a shag toy. Mm. <coughs> no, Pete. Bad. Bad dog. Well? Well, unless Duchess knows how to do the wheelbarrow, you don't want to know. Open that door. Why is it locked, anyway? to get the mail, it sneaked in there and began swiftly to bugger my duchess. So you're saying Pete snuck in there so we could lock you out and have sex with that cat? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. You don't believe me. Well, yes, he's done it before. I just thought that he'd broken the habit. But don't worry, Pete's fixed. She's a cat, Eddie, a different species altogether, but that fact doesn't seem to be slowing him down now, does it? Pete's not too particular, but he's usually pretty quick. Huh. Well, you know what they say. Pets resemble their owners. That is a police dog. Yeah, like my cat, Duchess is a queen bitch of England. Well, you know what they say, pets resemble their owners. I bet you get beaten up a lot. I'll tell you what, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, the shower is yours first. It was yours to begin with, no reason to change that. Now listen, I wouldn't be bragging to tell you that on more than one occasion, I've been told that I cook pretty well, but if my luck is holding, you're a vegetarian. Vegan. There you go, that's that then. And if Sir uh, Pussum's a stock market's gonna be coming by here on a regular basis, I'd appreciate it if you guys could use the bedroom from now on. You know, the only people who are disgusted by sexual acts are the people who don't have them. Oh, it's a beautiful act, but just like Shakespeare, it can be ruined by the inexperienced. Any questions? Are you quite finished? You look great in that outfit. But... Yeah, you can keep that room. 
That's cool. What? I found Rudy. Oh, well, I'll find the cockles, please. The malfeasant was detained after the pursuit. That is when, for no apparent reason, PC Martins and myself witnessed Detective Arlette kick the suspect in his testicles with great force. I happen to believe PC Harris's account. I'm not pressing charges, Nathaniel. We got our man, I'm happy. Pressing charges? No, I'm not. Well, of course not, why would you? Well, some folks might want to take advantage of the situation, start painting pictures depicting Scotland Yard, and I wanted to go the distance for NYPD. And I can tell by the expression on your face that is exactly the type of headline that you want to avoid. We are off to such a good start here, aren't we? There's so many other good headlines we could put out there. I couldn't agree more. What do you think, Brighton? Don't you agree? What headlines would you have us put out there? Oh, I would have to say... New York detective rendered imbecile a second time. Gingivitis, putritizers, pericoronitis, peridontitis, pulp necrosis, halitosis, putrefaction, and oral fungus. I've seen them all. But with light bright, say goodbye to fetid breath, because it has twice the potency of regular powders. That's the chemist. That's a fake. Congratulations are in order, Detective Arlette. You've traveled thousands of miles to London to arrest an actor who couldn't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> You see, they were looking for somebody who could play the part of a chemist to fool the New York cops. You know, tailor-made for an actor who was, well, free enough to take a trip to the United States. I mean, for me, it was just, just another gig. That was a mistake, but not as big a mistake as using your real name. What do I have to do to stay out of prison? <laughs> I'm hungry. Hello? I'm really hungry. Oh, I'm starving. Hear me? I'm all damaged. Come on, lads. Eddie, could you furnish a sandwich? I think so. How am I supposed to eat that? You said you had a list of the locations where the drugs are. Why don't you give us the information you promised? Yeah, well, I can't remember where I've hidden them. But they're here somewhere. Inspector Pippin? Yeah. I found something, sir. You see? All right. Yeah. Thank God. That's it. That's the list of addresses. <laughs> What is this? It's Tower Bridge. It's one of the finest examples of Lake Shore. Listen, you got your chicken. Now, what I tell you about jerking my chain? This is important. There's something going on here, and at newsstands like it all over the city. Well, see, you've got the list of addresses there of everyone. Look, there. Man, buying drugs. Man, there. Look. Anybody fancy an ice cream, then? Already here, sir. 23 locations under surveillance. Very good. We've got Martins and Khan here in second wave. 
Pippin, Eddie Arlett here, Aiken Arlett. Oh, the machine's broken. Well, get out of here. Another one approaching. Over. Well, Rudy, you recognize him? Maybe. Maybe not. He's clean. OK, mate. I'm on the move. So, where were we? Well, I'm curious as to how much my credibility and respect was worth on the open market. It wasn't so much for the money, it was for a woman. My wife, take her back to Spain. You are such an idiot. <laughs> it takes one to know one. Have you forgotten the reason why you happen to be here? Your pretty brunette friend, Miss Boobs McPerky. Yeah, well, listen, pal. Trying to help someone whose life may be in danger and being taken advantage of versus committing a felony for someone who's already left you, it's not even the same thing. How do you know she left me? Because you're not wearing your wedding ring. So you think taking her to Spain's gonna get her back? I know I'm never gonna get her back. But you're willing to commit a felony and to take her there anyway. One day, Eddie, you're gonna realize what a miserable bastard you were when you look back on all this to not understand love. Well, you're not going to Spain. You're going to be in New York. I'm gonna extradite your ass on a 747 nonstop to JFK. And when we get there, I'm gonna march you down Fifth Avenue like a parade float for all to see, just so they know, every single one of them, that Eddie Arlette gets his man. So, what? Well, vengeance is the name of your game. Even though they're gonna do God knows what to me when they find out I've turned them over. You betcha. All right. <sighs> What did I miss? This is cool. One nothing or something. I have two subjects approaching now. Are these our bad guys, Eddie? Well, Rudy? I need confirmation now, over. It's them. Let's go. Our two best players coming out to the field now. One local boy, one from further afield. Let's see what they're made of. He's making a break for it, but he's brought down. Another good tackle. Over the rest of the team, you're already getting stuck in there. This is turning out to be a very physical game. Strike is through, and it's a goal! Now the new player that we've not seen before, he seems to be dominating the game. The question is, where did he come from? Just some mopping up to do now. The crowd is going wild. And there's the trophy. Let's see that early tackle again. I don't think that was entirely legal, but it certainly did the job. Now the team hopelessly outclassed by our lads. They think it's all over. It is now. Great game, great performance. Only slightly marred by that rather embarrassing loss of possession late in the second half. As much as I hate to admit this, sir, Arlett's done it. He's gone and done it in short order. We've nicked a lot of them. Where is he? You got in cargo, Rudy. Thanks. Send you right down. What's this? My wife. Sure, it is, Rudy. Let's open it up. It's real. As much strife as I've caused you, being, well, an integral part of the undoing of Eddie Arlett, if you ask me, I'd do it all again to bury my wife where she will.
Eddie. I did follow the brunette. Go to 3 Morrow Street, flat 2B. <laughs> Secret to the universe. Hello? Yes, unfortunately he is. Hold on a moment. Superintendent Johnson's office. Thank you. I'm beginning to understand you, Detective Ouellette. For example, when I instruct you to proceed with caution and respect, I now understand that to you means when conveniently possible. There's an office with a far better view than this one. In the commander's office, you can see for miles. You can watch every little detail and manage them as you see fit. I want that office. I think you can help me get there. I'm not sure I follow. I'm not sure I like you. And I like results. A single man might climb any obstacle, but a team can move them right out of the way. Getting those drugs off the streets has got me one step closer to that office. And while we may never vacation together, we could be extraordinarily effective. I recognize there is a place for you on my team. <clears throat> That's all. Did he just offer me a job? Do you know, I think he did. Is he gay? No, he's just going places. Hey, man. It's been a pleasure. Take it easy. I will. OK, come back soon. What do you want? That's cool. Hold the cap. This is a little bit too soon, Eddie. You gonna give me a hand? Yes, sir. Talking about Eddie Arlette. The mayor was just in here. Yeah, you say it like it's the first time. It's the first time he's mentioned your name without a swear word. Listen, if you're afraid to come home. I'm not afraid to come home. I've just sort of scratched the surface here. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. I bet on the right horse. <laughs>